<laughs> All right, so you're tired of the kit lens. <laughs> you're ready to move on to a prime lens. This is a very popular question I get. What's the first prime I should buy? And the standard answers for Fuji are the 23 millimeter F2, great all around lens, great focal length for an all around prime lens. The 35 millimeter F2, that actually would be my top Fuji pick. The 35 millimeter F2, super sharp, great 50 millimeter focal length. So if you wanna buy a Fuji prime lens, get the 35 F2. Unless you want a little wider, you want you know a walk around lens to show the environment a little bit more, that would be your 23 millimeter. The other top lens that everyone loves is the 16 millimeter 1.4 and that's on my list to try soon. However, I started to think about it a little bit more and when I first started with my Canon gear, I bought a super cheap prime. I didn't know anything about primes, but I bought the Nifty 50, the Plastico El Cheapo prime lens was amazingly sharp and it taught me how to shoot at 1.8. I actually learned how to use a prime with a cheap plastic lens. And it was great and then I was hooked on primes and I got better primes and L lenses. So I wanna apply that same theory to Fuji. What is in this white box? Oh yeah. Okay, okay we should probably unbox it first. It's heavier than the 35 millimeter F2. That's nice. They probably put rocks in it. Of course, we compared the size of the Zonlai to the kit lens. Here it is next to the kit lens. Here it is next to the 35 millimeter F2. And of course, a tomato. There it is, guys. Well, first of all, it's ridiculously heavy. It actually has a really nice weight to it. And it's smaller than the 35 millimeter F2. So my recommendation for starting out with a prime is actually to get yourself a manual focus, cheap prime lens. It doesn't have to be the Zonlai, because I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> I have not no review right now, but I'm saying, my point is to try out a manual focus lens so that you can kind of get used to uh, manually focusing and see if you even like a prime. You may hate it, okay? Let's check out the mount. It's a nice pretty metal mount. All right, there's what it looks like on the Fuji X-T20. I haven't fixed the thumb thing yet, you know, from a few videos ago. So today I'm gonna to shoot with the Fuji X-T2. I, I would prefer the Fuji X-T20. However, I don't have a thumb grip on there yet. That's really nice, it looks great. Let's see if it tips. On the Fuji X-T20, it doesn't tip unless you push it. Okay, so it will stand up. Uh, as far as the aperture ring goes, it does click per stop. If you wanted a third of a stop, you kind of have to fake it and put it between the two clicks. So that's number one, is it has full stops on the aperture. The other thing to note is the aperture ring is backwards, so you actually will have to get used to going from 2.8 to four this way. If you're coming from the Fuji system, everything is the other way. Uh, one thing I'm not super crazy about is how loose the manual focus is and how much play it has. It actually seems to go all the way around. And that's in contrast to the Rokinon. Uh, the Rokinon manual is very good because it's so stiff, very stiff, very tight, and it doesn't go all the way around. You can actually go through the whole range from here to here. And from the zone lie, what I'm noticing is you go, it, it, first of all, it's crazy loose. So you'll have to hold on to it when you're manually focusing. What is this piece of skin? So it, this is like ridiculously loose if you're manually focusing, uh, but it's something you'll probably have to get used to. I haven't tried the lens yet, so let me try it. My finger's sticky now from this. Let's put it on the Fuji X-T2. Okay, here's what it looks like on the Fuji X-T2. And it definitely won't tip over even if you push it. So it's a little bit better balanced on the Fuji X-T2. And what a great focal length. I'm excited to try this 22 millimeter 1.8. I'm gonna check it out. Now where should we try this little lens out? Our first test was a minimum focus distance, open full at 1.8 and see how sharp things are. You could see webs on the web. Minimum focus distance and how dirty is your watch test. We also shot a brick wall at 1.8 
and of course 5.6 and realized that it's sharper at 5.6. We shot these flowers with the 22 millimeter 1.8 and realized there's really cool vignetting on the side. People complain about vignetting, but we love it here. We also shot into the sun and the flaring is pretty all over the place and there's purple things everywhere. I don't recommend shooting towards the sun with this lens. Here's a stop the lens down to F8 test and everything's crispy, delicious, and sharp. What restaurant is that? Hooers? In this test, we show you why it's fun to shoot with a prime wide open, and it's something that the kit lens can't do. Blurry your backgrounds with sharp focus on your subject. You can increase the bokeh in the background, but moving closer to your objects, of course. And we also did a test shooting wildlife and realized that photographing pigeons in manual focus is really, really impossible. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but they move around a lot. And staring at your screen, your LCD screen and the bright sunlight, trying to focus while they move around and eat bread. Ooh. Sometimes you get lucky. <laughs> All kidding aside, a little patience and I started to get some good photographs of the pigeons. And look at the background, you can see people staring at me. We performed a selfie test with the camera. We also tested the bokeh if you're standing further back from an item. This is at 1.8. The backgrounds aren't that super blurry, so know that you really need to get closer to your subjects to get that creamy bokeh. Don't forget to shoot into puddles. People will think you're cool. Now again, Bokeh at 1.8 is super fun with this lens. And here we added a tone. This picture could have been taken in the 1970s, except for that target sign back there. But remember, if you get close to your subject, the target sign up there disappears. Here's a better example of that bokeh distance. The huffy stitching is nice and tight, sharp but everything else is out of focus. And that's where this lens is really fun. Here's the Fuji 23 millimeter F2. If you remember, I reviewed it. This is at F5, where I got this little cicada shell in focus. But here, opening up at F2, you notice I can't get focus anywhere on the bug. And someone complained, someone was like, it's not a macro lens. Yeah, but this El Cheapo lens can get close. Not only can it get close, it can get close, closer, and even closer. And you can get closer and you can still see the leather grain, like the, the lens will focus on something. And I didn't find that with the 23 millimeter F2, my copy anyway, maybe yours does. Then I noticed something interesting with the lens. Here's the shot of New York from Hoboken. And I also took the shot with the kit lens at the same focal length, 22 millimeters. And I noticed that the zone lie has like a kind of look to it, like it has a vintage sort of tone, almost classic chromey. And the kit lens is a lot clearer, a lot cleaner. And by the way, don't give up on your 18 to 55. Here is wide 18. And if you're doing travel photography, you can zoom in to 55. So don't give up on your kit lens. 18 to 55. 18. Okay, you get it. So again, back to the zone lie, there's this cool little vintage brownish tone to it. Here's a shot straight out of camera with classic chrome. And what I did was I later in post added some tones to it. And if you like this look, like this cool vintage classic chrome look, I mean, you could shoot pretty much everything with this lens and get a consistent vintage sort of look. So I thought that was interesting that the, the white balance was completely different with the lens. Then I saw these little flowers, just testing bokeh there, but I got up closer to see, the, look at the yellow flowers in the background, they're completely gone. And this is where I was most surprised. I was most surprised that the lens was really great at faking macro. Like if you wanted to crop, th that's straight out of the lens, but if you wanted to crop this and get closer, these flowers are tiny, they're like the size of a dime. So I thought that was great, you know, to use it kind of as a macro lens. Again, not to, you know, dump on the 23 millimeter F2, but here was my attempt at doing the same thing this summer with the 23. And I had to stop to F5 if I wanted to get that look. So overall, super impressed with the sharpness and how fun it was to shoot with this little, you know, manual focus lens. Well, that was totally fun. You know, making this video, I realized that this wasn't really a review just for this lens. I think what I wanted to prove was you could get a fun, cheap, prime lens. Now the resale value probably is not gonna be amazing with this lens compared to having an official Fuji lens. But if you're tight on cash and maybe you don't 
think you want a prime or you want to try a prime lens. Uh, this was so fun shooting with this lens. And I think that's what this video is about. It totally was great just to be out manually focusing, figuring out my settings, working on composition and just shooting for me. Did I miss autofocus? Yeah, for some shots, any kind of action. But I actually, my brain was working overtime to get things like movement or bicycles going really fast. And so working out the problems of having a man manual focus lens was completely fun. The top two things I loved about the zones, uh, what's it called? Number one, it's focal length. 22 millimeters, 1.8, that's like perfect. I wish Fuji would make a 20, oh, they do. <laughs> you could totally get the 23 F2 lens or the 23 millimeter 1.4. They both cost a lot more than this. 22 gives you like in a full frame equivalent of a 33 millimeter, which is a little wider than your typical 35 millimeter. So great for street, great for environment. Loved it for, for, for that. And the other thing even more importantly is it actually did something that the 23 millimeter F2 of Fuji couldn't do, which is shoot really close up, minimum focus distance, and give me a sharp focus where the background has bokeh. That's how I like to shoot. So I found the most fun was getting close to objects and letting the background go blurry. And even it even worked like a little bit of a macro lens. Like when I was shooting some of the flowers, I realized if you have enough resolution, you could even crop and really fake your uh, macroness <laughs> to the max. Overall, the point is, one, have fun shooting. Two, if you don't want to spend on a prime, if you were looking for your first prime, go cheap. Maybe one of the Chinese lenses, there's a bunch of companies, uh, but maybe you can pick one up in the focal length that you want to try. I recommend like a 20 something or a 30 something. Once you see that like bokeh for the first time from a prime lens, you're gonna be hooked. All right guys, I'll see you next time. <laughs>